The last male northern white rhino on earth has died in Kenya at the age of 45, leaving only two females of his subspecies alive. The rhino, named Sudan, was suffering from a degenerative muscle and bone condition linked to age when keepers found he was unable to stand up and made the decision to euthanize him on Monday. Sudan's demise should spell the end of his subspecies, but scientists have gathered genetic material and hope to develop IVF techniques to produce more white rhinos. A statement from the al Pajata Conservancy, where he was kept under armed guard to prevent poaching, said his condition worsened significantly and he was no longer able to stand. His muscles and bones had degenerated and his skin had extensive wounds, with a deep infection on his back right leg. The rhino had been part of an ambitious effort to save the subspecies from extinction after decades of decimation by poachers, with the help of the two surviving females. One is his daughter, Najin, and the other is her daughter, Fatu. His death won't have an impact on the efforts to save the subspecies, as the focus turns to in vitro fertilization techniques using stored semen from other dead rhinos and eggs extracted from the two remaining females. He was a great ambassador for his species and will be remembered for the work he did to raise awareness globally of the plight facing not only rhinos but also the many thousands of other species facing extinction as a result of unsustainable human activity, said the Conservancy's CEO, Richard Bean. Sidan was something of a celebrity, attracting thousands of visitors. Last year he was listed as the most eligible bachelor in the world on the Tinder dating app in a fundraising effort. The northern white rhino population in Uganda, Central African Republic Sudan and Chad was largely wiped out during the poaching crisis of the 1970s and 80s, fueled by demand for rhino horn and traditional Chinese medicine in Asia and dagger handles in Yemen. A final remaining wild population of about 20-30 rhinos in the Democratic Republic of Congo was killed in fighting in the late 90s and early 2000s, and by 2008 the northern white rhino was considered extinct in the wild. Sidan was named after the country of his birth and was the last of his kind to be born in the wild. He was taken to a Czech zoo and then transferred to Kenya in 2009 with the three other remaining fertile northern white rhinos at the time. They were placed under 24-hour armed guard and fed a special diet. However, despite the fact that they were seen mating, there were no successful pregnancies, the Conservancy said. Rangers caring for Sudan described him as gentle and, as his condition worsened in recent weeks, expressed sadness over his imminent death. The rhino significantly contributed to survival of his species as he sired two females, the Conservancy said. Additionally, his genetic material was collected yesterday and provides a hope for future attempts at reproduction of northern white rhinos through advanced cellular technologies.
The only hope for preserving the subspecies now lies in developing in vitro fertilization techniques using eggs from the two remaining females, stored northern white rhino semen from males and surrogate southern white rhino females, the statement said. Sidan's death is a cruel symbol of human disregard for nature, and it saddened everyone who knew him. But we should not give up, said Jan Stejskal, director of international projects at Vrkralov Zoo in the Czech Republic. It may sound unbelievable, but thanks to the newly developed techniques even Sudan could still have an offspring. Northern white rhinos once roamed parts of Chad, Sudan, Uganda, Congo and Central African Republic and were particularly vulnerable because of the armed conflicts that have swept the region over decades. Other rhinos, the southern white rhino and another species, the black rhino, are under heavy pressure from poachers who killed them for their horns to supply illegal markets in parts of Asia. Roughly 20,000 southern white rhinos remain in Africa. Their numbers dipped below 100 around a century ago, but an intense effort initiated by South African conservationist Ian Player in the mid 20th century turned things around.